All right, in session two of this quick start video series, we're going to cover suppliers, products, and letter templates, which are a few of the areas that you will need to set up prior to entering any customer data. Products, obviously, you need to set up before you can add them to your estimates or your jobs, and suppliers are the people that you get your products from. So you got to set up suppliers in advance of products, and then also letter templates are used for communicating with your customers and being track of the documentation of things that you're sending to them via emails from the system. Okay, so let's get started by setting up some suppliers. So suppliers can be accessed from the setup menu under suppliers where the factory is or from the toolbar the second item over is the suppliers icon. So once I click that, I'll end up with a list of suppliers already in the system here, and there is one right now called Roofing Supplier. I'm going to add a few more suppliers for our example so that our products can be added. So I'll start out by adding a new record by clicking the plus in the grid, and then the supplier data entry screen will come up where I will type in all of the information for my supplier. And there's basically some contact information up here in the top, and then I can actually add related products right at the time I'm entering the supplier if I would like to. In this case, I'm actually going to add my suppliers first, all three of them, and then add the products after. So I'll start out with my first supplier who will be ABC Shingle Supply. I'll type in an address for them. And you'll notice the required fields are noted in red here with a star. And if I go through a field again without filling it in, a second star will appear letting me know that I cannot get past that screen. So you'll see if I go to save this data, a note will come up telling me that I have a bunch of required fields, including the zip code and some other ones that I haven't even gotten to yet. So I'll come back here and I'll start filling those in. I'll fill in the phone number, which uses a phone number mask, which means that all you do is type in the 10 digits of the phone number, including the area code. The system does the rest. Uh, the fax number is not a required field, so I'll leave it blank. Email address, I would fill in as well. Now it is a required field. Obviously, if you don't have a value for your supplier for a given required field, you can just make up some sort of value that will fit into the field. So in this case, in the email address, I just put in a test email address. Okay, now the payment terms drop down list is a list of payment terms, which we're configured in the pick list and you can configure this to include both your supplier payment terms and also the payment terms that you would use for your customers for your estimates and jobs. So it's a shared payment terms list of common payment terms and you choose the one that's going to make sense for your supplier. So in this case I'm going to choose net 30 terms for this supplier. Now that's all I need to do to set up the supplier. So I'm going to save the supplier and then I will refresh the data set and we now see that our second supplier is in there, ABC Shingle Supply. I'm going to just go on for the sake of complete completeness here and add my other two suppliers. So again, I will do that here. XYZ gutter house, put in all the fields. And as I put them in again, payment terms. And for this supplier, I will choose net 10 terms. And finally, I'll add one more supplier. So I'm going to add another one here. And this time I'm going to add the Home Depot as a supplier. So I type in all the information again, email address, if you have it, and payment terms at Home Depot will use due on receipt. Okay, so now I've got my three suppliers added to the system. Okay, so now that we have our three new suppliers, ABC Shingle Supply, XYZ Gutter House, and Home Depot, we can actually go in and add products to the system that we will actually include on estimates and jobs for our customers. We can add the products in one of two different ways. We can either come to the products toolbar icon or in the setup menu under products. This will bring us a listing of all of the products in the system at the given time. Right now we've actually got 163 items in the system across 17 pages. So I'm going to go ahead and click to add a new product record. In the product pop-up window, there are a number of fields that I'm going to choose and complete to fill out the product details. So let's start by choosing a supplier for our product. And the first product that I'm going to add is a shingle product. So I'm gonna choose ABC Shingle Supply as my supplier. And under product categories, there's a list of products here and you'll see that the three product categories that we added earlier in the pick lists setup are here, shingles, gutters, and ice and water shield. So for this particular product, I'll categorize it as shingles, and I'll go into the SKU, and I'll call this standard 20-year shingles. And my description will be standard 20-year 
shingles. Now you folks will want to put in a very big description here. This will be printed on your contracts. It'll be what when you sell this product, what you want your customer to see as your description. I'm just going to leave the same description as I have in the SKU here, but you would want to be more descriptive. Again, we have our required fields here, noted by the star. So let's go through these a little bit. Now, the next thing we have to do after putting in our, our SKU name and our description is to work out the costing of this particular product. So we break out costing into three different categories, a material unit cost, a labor unit cost, and an equipment unit cost. Those three components together add up to what is called the unit cost for the product. So let's go ahead and put this in. I'm going to say that this product costs $3. The, the labor is going to be $2, and there will be no equipment cost. Now that total automatically computes the unit cost of $5. I'm going to say that when I sell these shingles, the standard 20-year shingles, I would like to achieve a 20% profit margin. Now in doing so, that automatically computes the unit price to be $6. I won't have any shipping for this particular product, and I'll say that the unit of measurement is square foot. So this particular product will cost me $5 between material and labor. I have a 20% profit. So my total sales price is $6, and the unit of measurement is square foot. So $6 per square foot, or 600 per square, which is 100 square feet, however you choose to look at it. So now I have all of the required fields filled in. I'm going to save the product, and then I'll come back to this main area here, and I'm going to look for all shingles in the system. So from here, I can see some existing shingle products under the roofing supplier. I also see my ABC shingle supply shingles, which are right here. So I'm going to add another shingles product. We have a 20 year shingle, let's also add a 30 year shingle. So the supplier again, ABC shingle supply, shingles is the supplier, 30 year architectural shingles. Now the material costing on these is going to be a little more expensive. We'll say it's $5, labor cost will still be $2 and no equipment cost. So now I have a $7 unit cost. I would still like to see a 20% profit. So now my unit price is $8.40 per square foot. Now a little tip here guys, if you don't want to track any labor or equipment cost, you can just put your material cost in here. It will be the only thing that shows up in your unit cost. You do not have to track your profit in this particular spot. It will just pass through a zero if you leave it as a zero. And the other thing to note is that you can still have a unit cost of $7 and decide to override your unit sales price to be $9.50. That is fine as well. The override checkbox will allow you to do that. Unchecking that will use the automatic calculations of your unit cost plus your profit margin to come up with your unit price for selling. So now I've got a couple of shingles products. Two more products that I'm going to add are a gutter and some ice and water barrier. So let me go ahead and under the suppliers, I'm going to go to XYZ Gutter House. Under product categories, I'll go to gutters, gutters, and I will say that these actually call, and this is per linear foot, I'll say that this costs $6, and the labor cost will be $2, $8, and I'll try to get a 20% profit margin on that again, so $9.60, and the unit of measurement here will be, remember the unit of measurements, we added some extra ones, we added linear foot and per roll, so I'm going to use linear foot here. And I'll save that, and finally, I'll add one more product. And the last product that I'll add is ice and water shield. So I'm going to get that from the Home Depot. The category will be ice and water shield. And I'll call it Grace Ice and Water. We'll call it a 200 foot roll of ice and water shield. And we'll say that the material cost for that, now this is per roll, we'll say this is expensive. This is $200. And we'll say that the labor cost to install it is actually $50. Okay, so it's $250. We'll look for a 20% profit. Again, you can put any profit amount you want here. I'm just sticking with 20 across the board. And the unit of measurement for this will be per roll. Okay, now I've added my products. I've computed the costing and the profit and the sales price for my products. Now it's time to add some additional information. So I'm going to look at shingles again. And I've got two shingle products that I've added to the system. I've got my 20 year shingles here. So I'm going to come in to my shingles and I'm going to relate some data. I'm going to relate some images to these shingles. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a new image record right here. Now when I do that, it automatically chooses that it's a product image and it chooses 
the product for me, which is the 20 year shingle. So I'll go ahead and select from my hard drive and I will find the 20 year shingle. So I've got an Aspen Gray image here and I'm going to upload that. And there's the Aspen Gray. So I'll just note that as Aspen Gray shingle as the note. I'll hit save. And I'm, there it is right there, the Aspen Gray image is associated, and I'm going to add one more color as well. Again, to the 20 year shingles, browse to the hard drive, I'm going to add the autumn brown. Oh, here's the autumn brown. Okay, and I'll save that. So now I've been adding some, some pictures here. You'll see I have two pictures available. I can go in and edit the descriptions if I want. For instance, I didn't actually uh, put the word shingle at the end there, so I'll, I'll put the word shingle. Now you look here, required field-wise, file location and image name image type we can support jpegs png files gif files and bitmaps uh, the notes uh, is the piece of information that will actually show up on the printed document and again you can browse to the hard drive to see these things so i've got these here now i just want to show you an area where these are shown so if i can go back to an existing proposal okay i'm showing you a proposal here which actually has on the third page I believe we have customer specific photos I'll show you how those work but the next page actually has product specific photos so here are some of those pictures that have been uploaded to the system I actually probably ought to bring this back down to size so you can see them a little better there so you can see the product specific photos for this particular estimate so when we upload these photos to the products if those products are actually added to an estimate or an invoice or a job they will actually show up here in the printed documentation. So that's where the photos show up. So we've put in the 20 year shingle pictures. Okay, here's the other 30 year architectural shingles. I'm going to pull them up and edit and also add some pictures or photos for, for those as well. So here's the 30 year architectural shingles. I'm gonna go down to the images. I'm going to hit add new. Again, the product image is chosen for me. I'm going to select and go to my Timberline green. Okay, I'm also going to add another picture the shake wood just browsing to the hard drive grabbing these pictures and uploading them and now we have our pictures so I'll save that as well and then I'm going to go to the uh, gutter supply clear the filter there and see if I can get contains okay here's XYZ gutter house I've got my gutters I'm gonna go in add a relative related picture here for the gutters I'll come into my photos here's my gutter photo upload the file and finally I'll find my Home Depot item for Home Depot is the supplier I believe that will be the ice and water shield I'll pull that up and add an image to it as well select the file from the hard drive and I'll choose my grace ice and water upload the file and save and save okay at this point we've added three new suppliers we've also added four products to the system a couple of shingles, the different different shingle products, and a gutter product and an ice and water shield. We've uploaded images to each of those products. Some of those products, such as the shingles, got more than one photo per product. The other two, the gutter and the ice and water, got a single photo each. We calculated the detailed costing, the material cost, the labor cost, the equipment cost, the desired profit margin. Those things together calculated both the unit cost and the selling price. If you don't like the selling price that's computed by the system, you can click the override checkbox, override it, and put in your own sales price. So that's the suppliers and the products. Now you have to set up products and suppliers before you can add any estimates to the system you need to have items to add to your estimates and your jobs for your customers so that's the first thing you'll have to do is set up products and suppliers the final thing we're going to take care of in this session is to look at customer letter templates and that's access their letter templates are accessed here from the toolbar under letters or also under the setup menu you can choose letters now from here we see all the letter templates that are set up here are the template categories and then under each category if there are letters there you'll see them this one has a letter the job letters has one the welcome letters has two the appointment letters that's the pick list category that we chose earlier today during the pick list setup in the other session and it has no templates associated but what I'm going to do is highlight appointment letters and I'm going to hit add template when I add a new template to the system I get the word processor area up top I also have a template name and a subject down here at the bottom and a category. So I'm going to choose a category of appointment letters. I'm going to choose confirmation letter as my template name and 
I'm going to choose appointment confirmation as my as my subject. Now in here I can type any text that I want for my letter and then I have this insert merge field drop down that allows me to bring in data from my system. I've got my complete name and address information from the company setup which we did in the earlier session. I also have my logo from company setup. I've got my email address so on and so forth. I also have uh, first and last name of the user, that's me, um, email address of me because I'm the user logged into the system and then I have the customers information, the company name, address, zip code, phone, all of those fields are also here to be merged into the system. So if I choose zip code from customer record it actually puts a little merge field in here with the customer zip code. So you'll kind of see how that works and you can position those wherever you want inside the document. Now I'm going to take a pre-formatted letter that I've got here in Microsoft Word. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to bring it back in and paste it into the letter editor, the template editor. When I do that it says you're trying to paste Word formatting. Would you like to clean it? I'm going to say cancel to that and just let it paste in. So what you'll see here is I have a number of merge fields. My company name, address, city, state, and zip. So that's my address of my company. Then I have the customer's name and address. Then I have a salutation, dear, customer first and last name, on behalf of everybody at my company. Thank you for choosing to have an estimate for your roof. We're committed some text here, my phone, my email for contacting me. Again, thanks for your patronage. We look forward to seeing you. All of that information is in there, and so now I'm going to save this. Now that I've saved that, it's sitting under Appointment Letters as a confirmation letter. So now when I click on this, you'll see Preview will actually pull up into this area, and that's what the letter will look like. Obviously, the real values will be substituted in at runtime. Okay, that covers the training session for Master Data Setup. Next session, we will cover Customer Data.